there are really two approaches to measuring creativity. One comes out of the traditions of psychology to develop tests that they think will elicit a creative response. And to give you a common example, there is something called the unusual uses test. And you ask people to think of as many uses as possible for something. The common example, and it's actually in these tests, how many uses can you think of for a brick? And so people might reply, to build a building, to use as a doorstop, to use as a bookend, to use as a weapon. And their responses are recorded and then rated in terms of uh, novelty as well as quantity. And people are considered more creative if they produce a large number of relatively novel responses. Creativity tests are like IQ tests in that they assume that there's a distribution. You know, we know IQ is a bell-shaped curve like that. Well, creativity is assumed to be a bell-shaped curve like this too. So when psychologists administer these creativity tests to identify people who are highly creative, they lop off the high end of the distribution at some point, say the top 10% are considered to be highly creative. And a lot of the research that's currently being done on creativity uses that approach. There's another way of measuring creativity, which uh, is sometimes called historiometric, and it's primarily based on looking at what people have actually produced. And so in one approach, a scholar seeking cre creative people might pick a field like, say, mathematics or physics um, or within the arts, and then look at productivity within that field. So might count up number of articles uh, published, they might count up the number of citations to those articles within the arts. They might just look at book sales, things like that that are quantitative. A more refined version of that, and it, it's the one I'm currently using in my work, is to choose people who are just obviously creative. You know, anybody would agree once you mention their name or once they know something about the person that this person is highly creative. That approach cho chooses people who have been recognized for their work in some way. Nobel Prize winners. Uh, in the U.S. we have National Medals of Humanities and, and Sciences and so on. So National Medal winners, Pulitzer Prize winners, Academy Award winners. Uh, Man Booker Award winners, uh, you know, those are, I think, most people would agree, very high level examples of creativity. And then within the case study method, however you select these people, you interview them intensively uh, about their work habits and their personal history and so on. And then you can add on other things like uh, cognitive testing, and we add on imaging, of course.